if I throw a rope at you randomly, you're gonna think you're not gonna appreciate it. You're gonna say, "What's this guy doing?" I'm just standing here. The guy's chucking a rope, a rope at me. Yeah, yeah. But if you're drowning mm. and I throw a rope at you, you're gonna. That's your lifeline. You're gonna cling on it like your life. It literally yeah, does yeah, depend yeah. on it, isn't it? It could. It could be the thing that I need. You know, like I, I was talking to someone called Mohammed in um, Leicester Square. Leicester Square. Yeah, uh, I met him through Ash, and he gave me the Quran. And um, I'm definitely gonna read it, man, without a doubt. Because in democracy, the best thing that happened to me was I lost my phone recently, and I started reading again, nice. which is great. Which has actually been really good because I, I was another problem that I think is happening at the moment is I think the people are too glued to their to their screens, and it's like stopping people from actually living in reality. So I've, I've fallen victim to that myself. So I mean, there's a lot that can be said about why we intoxicate ourselves and all that sort of stuff, but it seems like you already know why. Yeah, it's, it's like Russell Brand says, isn't it? Yeah. It's not necessarily like people have a problem but, or that they have an addiction. Maybe the problem and the addiction stems from reality yeah, exactly. because it's, it's a coping mechanism exactly yeah. just just to kind of uh, numb it hoping that when they become sober again things will have sorted themselves out yeah. sort of thing isn't it yeah, exactly. but unfortunately and sadly doesn't happen. It, it doesn't happen it's otherwise just sweeping it under the rug like when you get addicted to alcohol i used to be addicted to weed right that was like my drug of choice and i remember I, the reason why i started smoking it in the first place was because it open up parts of my brain that I wouldn't I wasn't using before but subsequently when I got addicted to it it was having the opposite effect and I realized that I was medicating with it and sweeping the emotions under the rug and not dealing with it so the best thing I did was quit and then I got addicted to alcohol so and then I'm doing the exact same thing and I think a lot of it is because I love music so I'm a musician and I I, I, de I feel like I depend on these these things to kind of like get away from sobriety, but it's, it's really, it's not sustainable. It really isn't. And something like having like a moral guideline, like a religion, could be a way of like keeping me on the straight and narrow. Oh, like sorry, that. what's your name? Joe. Joe, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like a cup of Joe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like this. What was your name? Uh, my name's uh, Zishan. Zishan, yeah? Zishan. Cool, man. So Joe. Mm. All right, Joe, you raised some very good points. And I noticed that even when you're articulating yourself, you're not loading your language. So you're saying, I feel like I depend on this, mm. or uh, you know, I, maybe I use it. These, these, it's very good that you, you, you're somewhat conscious that these addictions mm. or, or your kind of temporary state is not your reality. Right, it's not yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Like you are the sky. These things are like the clouds, mm, like they're okay. passing. Yeah, and that's yeah. a very, very important and healthy distinction you've made. Because mm. a lot of people, Joe, what they do is they say, I'm a drunk, I'm an alcoholic, I'm this, or I'm that. They make it a part of their identity. Right, and then it's like they, they are out of, con they don't have any control over their because they, yeah, yeah, because they feel it's them, mm. isn't it? Very good, exactly. Because if you've detached it from yourself, there's more hope now of, of you doing something to that periphery, yeah. like a mouse on a computer. It can be plugged out, can be yeah. put back in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So these are peripheries. I guess if you if you see yourself similarly like a like a computer, and these things are just being plugged in, mm. a USB is plugged in, then you can plug, you, you can safely remove it, and and that sort of thing, which is very good. And also you've linked it to uh, having some sort of code. Because Joe, that's exactly what religion is. Mm. Yeah, I used to be really like atheist, you know. I was like, oh, f religion and all this, and then I realized I started looking at the world around me, and I was like, well, look, where's our values? What's there's that, there's a reason why there's these been these religions for such a long time because it, it works. Yeah, we need it without a doubt. Yeah, hundred mm. percent. Even when you look at the studies, mm. yeah, there's a study by Timothy. Uh, Timothy B. Smith. Okay. There's another study by Brian Johnson. In fact, they've compiled over 200 studies to show that if a person adopts a religion, they have less depression, less dependent on drugs, less suicide, more generosity. So these are studies, not just of one paper, two paper, hundreds of, of studies compiled together to reach these conclusions. Yeah, so we've of course established that 
you know what? We do need religion. Yeah. Yeah. Without religion, it's like you know when you uh, get these flat packs from IKEA to build a shelf. Yeah. It's like not having the the, the guidelines to build exactly. it up. Or it's like going to the gym and not having like a. Yeah. Uh, you know, like a plan, like yeah. what you're gonna do. Yeah. I, remember, I remember the first time I went to the gym. Yeah. Oh, you should have seen me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I was flipping all over the place. Yeah, exactly. Didn't know how to use the machines. Exactly. I had to, in the end, I had to look at the the, the little sticker yeah, they've yeah. got on the machine. Be like, hey, that works my triceps. Yeah. And then just doing it, bro, I look like a mug, an absolute yeah, class yeah. A mug. And then, so you've got instructions there. Mm. They were a blessing in disguise. Then I started looking at other people. Then Ali came and he was like, look, I'll meet you once a week. I'll show you how to do it, mm. get a plan, blah, blah, blah. So that same logic, yeah. if you like, fit in with religion, yeah, you got the book, yeah, which is the instruction manual. Then you've got the prophets and the prophets are an example. Yeah, so sometimes, you know, like I'm, I'm seeing something on the IKEA, you know, flat pack and I'm like, what? How do I put that screw there? Like, I, I, yeah, don't, well, I don't know. The, I missed the step. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If someone's there going, uh, 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 no, no, put that one over there. Okay, now, now you're going to need two people. Bring that person in. Right. It's so helpful. Because it's like, it gives you, having like some kind of, uh, like a, a source of guidance personified, it helps, doesn't it? 100%. Because if you're just getting guide from some kind of empty, non-entity, then it's, it's, it, you're not going to take reverence from the advice that you, you get given. All right, Joe, now you tell me, mm. out of the holy books that are there, from the Abrahamic faiths, from the, from the faiths that have the highest adherence, mm. yeah, which book do you think that the claimants, the adherents, mm. claim it has not been changed even a dot? Well, I mean, definitely not the Bible, because King James, he messed that one up, didn't he? <laughs> but I, one thing I will say, I would like to be able to, if I do enter religion, I would like it to be not so conclusive to one one faith. Like I would like to do, but I, you, you may not agree with that. You may be on this kind of thing, but if you, you have to choose a specific path and a specific set of guidelines. But what I would love to be able to do is extrapolate what I like the most from all different religions and then just kind of like synthesize my own ideology. Joe, that's that's a very um, that's a very clever thing. In fact it's so clever that God's done it for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in what in, what, in, um, in the yeah. form of the Quran? Yeah, because think about it Joe. You had I mean if you if we were to rank the three Abrahamic religions, yeah? You had mm. Moses who came first, yeah, yeah, out of the three uh, Abrahamic religions, and Moses bought the Torah, also known as the Old Testament. Yeah, yeah. I'm which half was, Jewish, so I know about that. There yeah, you yeah. go, there yeah, you go. Yeah. So that was relevant for that time. Mm. Then, as you've acknowledged that the Bible was changed, yeah, including the Old Testament. Yeah. So you know now that it's not fair for the people that are going to come after that. Mm. And plus that Bible now is not necessarily relevant because humanity has moved forward 500 to 1000 years. Then we got Jesus, yeah? God yeah. sent Jesus with the New Testament, yeah? Updated guidelines, yeah? And again, with another prophet to show us what to do. Thereafter, yeah, after Jesus, we believe Jesus was raised, he didn't die. He wasn't disgraced like people claim he was. He was raised to the heavens and will be sent again. As do all three Abrahamic faiths. And then after he left, then we know that the Bible was changed. You can check John chapter 7 verse 53 right at oh, the bottom. It got changed a lot. It got changed a in lot. In fact, even yeah, in the yeah. printed in the printed versions, at the bottom it says this was added by a scribe. It, does, yeah, yeah? Yeah. it tells you at the bottom. In the preface it says... It's no secret. People yeah. know it's been like... It's new editions have become exactly. It's, it's like that, that, the Bible is very old, you know what I mean. So it's been changed a lot. And, exactly. And then, of course, there was uh, then there was Prophet Muhammad, and that was just like I think that was. Like, but the think about it though. Of the medieval times, wasn't it? But but think about it, Joe. Jesus himself says, "I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel." Mm -hmm. Yeah. He spoke their language. He he continued the law of Moses. So uh, Jesus didn't claim to come for everybody yeah mm. however then of course when Jesus was raised and the Bible got changed then God sent the final testament 
which encapsulated all of the previous books. Right, right. Because if you look at the six themes of the Quran, they are themes that are covered in the previous books also. Mm. Yeah, in fact, if you look at the prophecies of Prophet Muhammad, mm. yeah, they are even being unraveled today. Yeah, right, there's right. certain prophecies that I'm going to tell you are going to be like, oh damn, he said that? 1400 years ago, <laughs> yeah. he said that? Yeah. And we'll be like, yeah, he did. Mm. Yeah, so no other prophet claimed, I am for everyone. But do you feel that like literally there's no validity in other interpretations of the of the Lord? That's a good question, but I'd I'd frame it like this. When you were seven years old and you had a jumper, mm. yeah, that jumper fitted you, it did the job for you. Right. Yeah? Now that you're you grew up to 11, 12, mm. yeah, you needed another jumper. Mm. This was this needed to be a bit bigger, maybe your moving areas a bit thicker. Mm. If somebody says, What about this jumper? It doesn't it mean it's wrong. But I kind of feel that that's the same case with uh, religion now as well. I think that there needs to be some kind of reform, like an, a re-established, because like, no disrespect to the Quran, but it's kind of outdated in, in certain ways as well, in my opinion. Um, and I think that we need some kind of new interpretation that's like uh, an amalgamation of all of these these great this great information. That, that comes from all what do you feel is outdated? Well, I mean, things, things that were relevant then don't seem to be relevant now, but at the same time, I think that, like, like what? Like, um, I don't know, no, no, we're getting into a debate. <laughs> no, 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 honestly, Joe, mm. I, look, I'm not here to convert you, mm. I'm not here to trip you up. Yeah, no, no, um, no, no. Uh, even if you check my YouTube channel, mm. it's I do banter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah, bit yeah. of a laugh. I cover current affairs, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not that type. Yeah, okay. If you feel yeah. it gets a bit uncomfortable, bro, you can walk away no, whenever no, you want. No, no, no. Yeah, no, yeah. No. Well, and I don't want to. I don't want to step on anyone's no, 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 toes Joe, either. Joe, this but, is my first day here, isn't it? Nah, no, but Joe, think of it like this, yeah. I'm telling you mm. that there is one path. There's one book. There's one prophet. Mm. I'm making the claims that mm. this is the path, not only for you, for me, for the whole of mankind. Mm. I should be able to take a few questions that you send my way. Yeah, yeah, I should be able to withstand certain, you know, um, bitter pills if mm. I'm making such a big claim. In fact, I, I would say it's your right mm. to ask me. And That's I'm the not great thing get... about discourse, isn't it? Yeah. This is what it's all about. You just like exchange ideas. Yeah, and, and, like, Bro, yeah I'm not. I'm not yeah. like that. That oh, <laughs> why did you say? No, say what you want. But say it's it. It's kind of yeah. difficult because like I was gonna think of it one example like oh why why is it like the rule of women need to cover up and stuff like that but then then there's another part of me that's thinking well look what's going on with like a lot of the with, with culture at the moment with the over sexualizing of women and so like there's this with every single point that I make there's always some that I, I'm already can hear the rebuttal back to it so I'm definitely I would say that I'm conflicted in my views about these things and I definitely haven't given it as much time as you have to like really you know I suppose I put a lot of my my, my thought process into my writing of my lyrics so a lot of the thought process goes into recording the feelings into that do you know what I mean but like you definitely you know maybe I mean? do that then make a make a few tracks mm, I am I'm, I'm doing I'm doing that at the moment yeah yeah even uh was, um, I'd love to show you my rap at some point. Yeah. No, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to hear it. There's a, a lot of these um, uh, famous artists in, in history. Mm. They, they did put a lot of kind of their, their, their feelings and emotions. And if that's something that works for mm. you, then use that as a medium to kind of get your thoughts yeah, out definitely. there. But Joe, going back to that point mm. where you said, does that mean that Christianity is, is false? Mm. Or does it mean that you know, um, we, we can't take from those. It's like a jumper, a yeah. five-year-old, and then you've got an 11-year-old. Yeah. Now, you don't say that jumper is wrong. You say it's, I've grown out of it, it's yeah. outdated. And then now you might be wearing this Yankees jacket, but you know, to a seven-year-old, he's not going to appreciate a Yankees yeah, yeah, jacket. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you were saying that like, it was valid at the time and it was needed at that point, yeah. but then we need to move on to something new. Yeah. I'm saying that Islam now, because there was no prophet to come after Prophet Muhammad. Mm. Therefore, Islam is now something which is a guideline till the end of time. Right, right, like it encapsulates, it, it, it encapsulates every lifestyle choice, it encapsulates any issue that a person is going to have, it encapsulates above and beyond what we even know. Mm. And sometimes, this is, this is what's remarkable that 
that if you look at the Quran, the exegesis, yeah, the um, commentary of the Quran, there's there's so many things you can extrapolate from it. Mm. That there's so many solutions. Mm. For example, the Quran, yeah, the, or the sayings of the Prophet, he even tells us effectively on how to go to the toilet, yeah, how to eat properly, how right. to sleep. Yeah, how to, uh, you oh, know, it's very specific. It's very, right, very right, specific okay. because mm. think about it. I've never read it. Mm. Yeah, because think about it, like even sleeping, like w when you go to sleep, sleep on your right side. Mm. Yeah, and then we know logically our hearts on our left side. So if we're sleeping on our left side, we're putting Fresh weight. Water. Yeah, a drink in three gulps. The Prophet peace be upon him said drink in three gulps. Okay. Unlike the drinking of a camel. Yeah. yeah, and then now the scientists tell us that if you drink all in one go, then it puts a strain on your visceral organs. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And when you when you go to the toilet, sit down and go to the toilet. Because if you sit down, what you're doing is you're you're, you're squeezing your your bladder. So if you sit down, you you make a kind of um, you you your your your, st your, st your lower part of your stomach joins with the top part of your leg. So and you're your digestive system. Yeah, 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 and and your bladder, and then all the urine comes out properly. So there's less chance of a UTI for women or you know a um, I don't want to get like technical but a certain certain thing gets blocked up yeah especially if a woman's pregnant or whatnot or when she's going through a cycle and it's the same with a man also yeah you don't want to be standing up and then you know a few drips and drabs uh, <laughs> you know, aftershock so you get you get like this very specific what I'm hearing that there's like specific guidelines but unlike with the Bible where it's like you can extract knowledge if you interpret it the right way. This is one of the things that really got me into reading the Bible, was uh, reading Cain and Abel. It's like one paragraph and it talks about Cain and Abel and it talks about one brother who's willing to make sacrifices to God and another one who does it half-heartedly. And like, I started to realize that you could, you could think about sacrifice, not just literally giving a sacrifice to God, but sacrifices you make in life. Yes. And I, I started to realize that like Cain could be compared to like one of my layabout friends who's not doing anything with his life and he's getting jealous. So he, he, he makes life difficult for other people around him. So when I started to see that through these stories, you can apply it to your own life. Then that's when I, that's when I started to realize, no, nah, there's something to this. And then I started to read Frederick Nietzsche. I started to look around, like look around and look at what's on on YouTube and like social media and how secular things have become. Like, and I'm, I'm totally with you, man, without a doubt. Whether it's going to be Islam for me or if it's going to be Christianity, I'm not sure yet. But I've got, I've definitely got to do a lot of thinking. Man. What's interesting about Frederick uh, Nietzsche mm. is. He, he's got that famous quote, isn't it? God, it could be killed God, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that God is dead. Yeah, yeah. But then there's a, another good quote by... But he didn't say that in jubilation. Yeah. He, didn't, he wasn't happy about it. He but was C very C. J. sad C. J. about it. CJ Chesterton mm. gives a, a good kind of uh, exegesis or explanation of that. Mm. He says, God being dead doesn't mean that man won't believe in anything. Mm. It means that man will believe in anything. Yes, that's it, that's it. And that, what he predicted, <laughs> Frederick Nietzsche anyway, is that we would turn into narcissists. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happening right now. When you look scary. at liberalism, mm. with liberalism, the goalposts are constantly changing. Yeah. In fact, uh, even if you look at um, the, the founder of, um, of utilitarianism, mm. yeah, it's based on the, let's face it, the liberalism principle, the, the crux of liberalism is based on the, the weight of pleasure and pain, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. If, if pleasure outweighs pain, then it's good. Mm. If it's vice versa, then it's bad. Mm. Yeah, and but religion transcends that. Yeah, it says yeah. you're not doing things and you shouldn't do things just for pleasure. In yeah. fact, as Muslims, we have something called uh, niya or intention, which is you do something only for God. Yeah, yeah? so that's, this, the, that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Because it's like it gives you an opportunity to worship something higher than you like something there's there's got to be something that you're divisible to wicked That's exactly it. yeah exactly because if you're just if you're just doing it living life for yourself then you just become a narcissist basically and that's what's Pretty going much. on around us we're yeah. seeing this i mean have you seen the new batman no i haven't no no it, the trailers come out yeah uh, but dc is known for making very dark movies uh, yeah. when it comes to their characters but i mean 
it's, it's interesting to see how certain reboots are becoming more darker. Certain yeah, yeah. people that were once dis used by Disney, like mm. teenagers and making these little shows, have suddenly become very dark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it kind of fits in with how you're saying the trajectory that a godless society is taking. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a case and I'm going to tell you uh, what makes Islam unique from, say, Christianity and the other okay. faiths. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the first thing, of course, Islam claims that the Quran hasn't been changed. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's the only one that makes that claim that it is the word of God. Yeah. Yeah? Literally the word of yeah, God. I remember Muhammad telling me this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And somebody might say, yeah, but I mean, you're making that claim. Mm -hmm. No, we have manuscripts which can be dated right. to the time that it was compiled mm. yeah now you might be thinking yeah but it's probably like in one of your muslim countries in it like saudi or you know over right, there right, right, yeah. but I'll, joe I'll, i would tell you that it's in this country mm -hmm. birmingham university mm. holds one of the oldest manuscripts of the quran mm. christianity judaism doesn't make this claim that they have manuscripts dating to the time mm. of their quote unquote founders although we don't believe so it hasn't founders. been corrupted by reinterpretations and yeah exactly mm. and also joe when you look at christianity it depends you ask a question what do you believe about god some mm. will believe in the trinity yeah. some will believe There's that different factions yeah. of, of the some religion, will yeah. believe jesus is the son of god some mm. will believe he's a prophet this is a fundamental of faith mm. you ask a muslim yes we may disagree about other things mm. but our fundamental creed you ask any muslim mm. five-year-old ten-year-old twenty-year-old fifty-year-old Somali, Lebanese, mm. you know, French, they will all say, we believe God is one and we believe the final prophet is Prophet Muhammad. Right, That's right, a fr right. French accent, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you get uh, any Muslim saying that. Mm. When you say, oh, you French Muslim, what Quran do you believe? I believe in the same Quran. You ask a German, I believe in the same Quran. Yeah, you ask a Chinese person, uh, my so Chinese it's accent. <laughs> yeah, it's not very good. They all believe in the same Quran. Yeah. Now, if you ask yourself, then Joe, if I was to believe in a religion, if I was to believe in a religion, surely the scripture that has been sent, because it's been sent by God, surely he should be able to look after it, isn't it? Right, I see, I get your point. You know what I'm saying? Like. Harry Potter, if somebody starts adding like uh, Harry Potter mm. went to Hogwarts, Harry Potter met Hermione, then Harry Potter smoked some pot. One thing I will say though, right, is like, even though that, that original text hasn't been corrupted, right, it's still, and this is a case with all religions, it doesn't change the fact that people have used that, your religion and other religions in corrupting ways, you know what I mean? Yeah, of and course. It gets into, it gets, and we, you know, that's obvious, we know that. So I'm not like take, making it as like the, as, as my claim to not get into religion, but it doesn't okay. render your point obsolete, but it is notable, you know, that like, even though the text may not And that's be how I'm giving it. Yeah. I'm, I'm giving it as a note. Mm. I'm, I'm scaffolding the argument. Mm. It's not the only one. Yeah. In fact, even as a side note, a footnote, I would say, and I would reference non-Muslim sources, yeah? Mm. Karen Armstrong has written a book called Fields of Blood. Scott Atrian, Scott Atran, mm -hmm. he's a terrorism expert. Mm -hmm. And uh, amongst others, yeah, there's, there's uh, two others, their names have skipped my head. Mm. Something more. Um, okay. Yeah, and they're of the opinion that, in fact, let me put that on. I Put that on ice. Yeah, let me put that on ice. MI5, let's deal with the country that we're in, yeah? yeah, yeah. MI5 in a 2008 report. Do you mind if I smoke, by the way? No, no, go for it, go for it. Just do, do, do it, like the, the side flex, yeah? <laughs> They're like, yeah, Scott Atran. <laughs> That's what I think of Scott Atran. No, no, no. So, yeah, go on. Yeah, so MI5, they said that the people that are conducting these attacks, mm. these people, they don't practice their faith. They have a very basic understanding of their faith. Um, and oh, who, who are they talking about? Sorry? They're talking about extremists. Oh, extreme, right, right, right. Yeah. Extremists, yeah. And then if we look at Scott Atran and Karen Armstrong, they're, well, Karen Armstrong's of the opinion that most of these attacks done by whichever religion, mm. the, these are done 
mostly for geopolitical reasons. Yeah, yeah. That's Scott cool. Atron also says that the motivation for these people isn't usually religion. Yeah, oh. these are experts. They've written They'll literature. They'll rationalize it as something spiritual to it's, kind of it's used, to bring it? a narrative that's to make it seem like it's moral. Yeah. And this is the one thing I get worried about with religion. When it's used for like, you know, for political purposes or like used as a kind of like um, it's predicated on something spiritual, but really it's just being used for their own, for someone's own gain. You know but Joe, I mean? that happens all the time. Of course, no, no. You know, any death that not we... just religion, though. If you look at what's going on now with coronavirus, that's not religion. That's science doing the exact same thing. So this is one thing I say to people. They say, "Oh, religion. Look what it does. It just corrupts people. Look, human beings will do that no matter what." They use football. Football gets used. Yeah. Yeah, you know, certain countries are buying certain clubs yeah. for whatever reasons. Mm. You'll get certain events being used, certain mm. charities get used. In fact, the British, when they used the uh, East India Company, yeah, to go there, to go to India for trade, and then ultimately uh, they, they took over. Mm. Yeah, but the point is anything can be used. Yeah. But just because it gets used, if, for example, Joe, if, if a country says, Class A drugs are wrong, mm -hmm. yeah. But somebody does a Class A drug mm -hmm. and they die. Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna blame the country? Or are you gonna blame the person? Blame the person. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. Like religion doesn't condone these things. Mm -hmm. However, if you look, at, for example, I would just give you three things mm -hmm. to research. Yeah. One's a Sykes Pico treaty. Or Sykes Pico. Sykes Pico. Sykes Pico. Sykes Pico. Okay. Yeah. Right, so when right. you get home, check it out. Right. Sykes Pico is when the Ottoman Empire, which is an empire of Muslims, yeah, uh, when that collapsed, the British, the French, and I think it was the Russians. It, it collapsed in World War One, didn't it? Uh, World War Two. World War Two. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a long. That was a big empire from Turkey, wasn't it? It yeah. was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then what happened was the uh, the the Middle East literally got carved up. Mm. You take this, you take that. Wow. We take this, we take that. Yeah. Mm. And then if you look at the Berlin Conference, Africa, it was similarly Europe. They they call it like there's a picture in one of the newspapers. Africa's depicted as a cake, and you've got these leaders just taking a slice. Yeah. And now if you look certain wars that have been happening in Africa for a very long time yeah it's because there's dispute about the borders that have been literally drawn on we'll take this all right you guys take it even Belgium <laughs> who were who were the weakest they came and they got a portion of it as well yeah so the thing is now the borders that we have Joe are actually a lot a lot of the things that we see nowadays can be traced back to those days right, and right. it is and that's why you've got professionals like Karen Armstrong saying look the, these these are linked to geopolitical reasons mm. for example even if you look now Iran why is Iran pissed Afghanistan why is Afghanistan pissed yeah you look at all of these in fact you can name any country and I can link it to a geopolitical thing mm. that happened post World War Two right, yeah, post World War Two there's a reason, mate. But the thing is, it's difficult to rally people around nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to rally people around something that's already established. Mm. You're doing your job. It's like, it's like Pepsi. Mm -hmm. Rather than spending millions of pounds, they just get messy on there. Mm. Because oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of that marketing's already been done on Messi. Mm. He stick Messi on there, boom, like yeah. he's done half of our job. It's, like, it's a clever marketing technique. You want, you want to get your country back or you want to get this political issue. Mm. Why not use something that's already established? Mm. But then, mate, that's where people then need to think objective. That's where education comes in. You can take liberalism and link it to Napoleonic wars. You can take something like socialism and Marxism, mm. which inherently or on paper seems very simple. Very good, yeah. yeah. But in reality, it didn't yeah, work. It didn't I get into big arguments with my mum about it because she's like a communist and like she's very like radical left. I'm not saying that I'm right wing at all, but like I try to, and then I think this is my view in general with everything. I try to kind of just say, not really have a, a, a you know, a stake in any position and kind of just stay in the centre. 
probably like centre left, but I find what I don't like is when people get too extreme, and this is what we were talking about before, because it always comes down to people will rationalise their actions um, using radical ideologies, basically, and that's what we've got to be. We've got to but be then, cautious of. But Joe, what we do then, and that's why here I'm here defending Islam, mm. not the adherence to Islam. No, yeah, yeah. It's like with with anything, you've got nutcase vegans. Yeah, 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 you got nutcase meat eaters. Yeah, there's nutcases everywhere. Mm -hmm. But the thing That's is, the thing it doesn't just happen with religion. Like we were saying before, like radicalism is happening right now with people with vaccines. You know, the yeah, masks and go. everything. There That's not go. religion. That's science, isn't it? So but anything can be dogmatic, and monolithic. So yeah, yeah. So okay. going back to the argument, number one, my first criteria is the Quran. If we're claiming it's from God, the Quran is the only one that makes the thing. It yeah. hasn't been corrupted. Hasn't been changed. And the the core belief is the same, no matter what sect you follow. One God, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, is the final messenger. We believe in the prophets, the angels. Yeah, billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi the books, the angels, wa rusulihi wal yawmil akhir the day of judgment. All good and bad is from Allah, destiny, etc., etc. Yeah, we got six articles of faith. Every Muslim will accept this. But when you ask a Christian, yeah, it's different. Like last. Last week, a Christian was telling me, yeah, the New Testament. Do you uh, get into big debates with Christians here? Uh, to, to be honest, Joe, 